Hey guys, it's Metacosis Perfect Snellus, where medicine makes perfect sense. Let's continue our labs playlist. In previous videos in this series, we talked about urine uric acid, urine chloride, urine potassium. We talked about the Benz Jones proteins in the urine. We talked about urine casts, urine protein, urine white blood cell, and red blood cells. We talked about urine catecholamines. We even talked about urine bilirubin and urobilinogen. And in the last videos, we talked about blood urea nitrogen, creatinine, and the serum BUN to creatinine ratio, which is utilized to differentiate between different types of acute renal failure or acute kidney injury. Today is another topic related to acute kidney injury, which is the fractional excretion of sodium in the urine. Please watch the videos in the series in order because they build on top of each other, especially these four plus the one on the BUN to creatinine ratio. As my kidney fails, my GFR deteriorates. When it gets so bad, I will need dialysis. Acute kidney injury is usually reversible, but chronic renal failure is not. Where did you get the urea in your blood, i.e. the blood urea nitrogen from? I got it from the urea cycle. Who did that? The liver. The liver converted ammonia into urea through the urea cycle, and then urea will go to the blood, and then that urea will end up in the kidney. But where did the ammonia come from? The ammonia came from the metabolism of amino acids via deamination and transamination. Where did the amino acids come from? From the proteins that you ate. So in order, we go proteins, then amino acids, then ammonia, converted into urea in the liver, Urea is now in the blood, urea will get excreted into the kidney. All of that was normal. Let's talk about the abnormal. If I have a liver failure, the liver is toast. Anything before the liver will go up and anything after the liver will go down. So what's gonna happen to my ammonia level in the blood? It will go up, we call this hyperammonemia. But now watch what's gonna happen when the kidney fails, not the liver, the liver is healthy here. The kidney has failed. Everything before it will go up. Everything after it will go down. What do you think is going to happen to urea level in my blood? It will go up. We call it uremia. And since urea is made of nitrogen and nitrogen is called azote, we can call uremia azotemia, which means increased nitrogen, i.e. urea, in the blood. That's why we measure the blood urea nitrogen. We're measuring the nitrogen which is in the urea, which is in your blood, which is high if you have kidney failure. Remember we talked before about the serum blood urea nitrogen. Think of it as a portion of the urea. And uremia will exist in cases of kidney disease. Sometimes it's not the kidney's fault. Sometimes the perfusion coming to the kidney is deficient, such as cases of hemorrhage or shock or any cause of extracellular fluid volume depletion. Less blood is coming to the kidney, less filtration, less kidney function, which means less urine output, which means oliguria, but uremia and azotemia. Sometimes it's the kidney's fault. Something is wrong with the kidney. Could be because of ischemia or toxicity. The textbook will call them ischemic versus nephrotoxic. I call them hypoxic or toxic. It just has a better ring to it. So intrarenal azotemia is either hypoxic or toxic. But sometimes the problem is post-renal after the kidney, such as obstruction of both ureters or obstruction of the urethra, such as cases of benign prosthetic hyperplasia in males, cervical cancer in females, kidney stones in both. So what does azotemia mean? Tons of nitrogen waste in the blood. What do you mean by the nitrogen waste? Blood, urea, and nitrogen mainly. But since the kidney is the organ responsible for also excreting the creatinine, creatinine too will rise in my blood. So I get azotemia, which means high BUN and high creatinine, but low urine output because the kidney is sick. Allegoria. So kidney failure is characterized by accumulation of urea in the blood, called uremia, nitrogenous waste in the blood, 
azotemia. Remember that nitrogen is part of urea. What do you call that? Remember that your metabolism secretes all kinds of acids, especially the metabolism of proteins. So we call this uremic acidosis. Is this the lung's fault? No, the lung is healthy. Therefore, this is a metabolic acidosis with high anion gap. Kidney function is poor, so GFR is down, urine volume is down. What is accumulating in the blood is the blood urea nitrogen and the serum creatinine. So in kidney failure, whether it's acute or chronic kidney disease, you end up with a metabolic acidosis with high anion gap. However, in renal tubular acidosis, you end up with a metabolic acidosis with normal anion gap. This distinction is very important, confuses tons of students. Keep this in your mind. Acute kidney injury, HAGMA. Chronic kidney disease, HAGMA. But renal tubular acidosis, Nagma. We shall discuss renal tubular acidosis in a later video in my nephrology playlist. One of the causes of decreased urine output is acute kidney injury or acute renal failure or acute azotemia. So I have azotemia. It could be a problem in the kidney itself, like hypoxic or toxic, or it could be something before the kidney because there is a rule in medicine that says no BP equals no PP. If you have no blood pressure to perfuse your kidney, the kidney is not going to make urine. No BP, no PP. Or the problem could be after the kidney, post renal azotemia, such as cases of obstruction. Which one is the kidney's fault? Intrarenal azotemia. That's the kidney's fault. That's a bad kidney. But if the problem was before the kidney, my kidney is still healthy. How about after the kidney? My kidney is still healthy, at least early on. What do you mean by a healthy kidney? What do you mean by a good kidney? Which reminds me of the ancient Greek philosophers asking about, quote, what's the good life? What's a good kidney? A good kidney is a kidney that is capable of reabsorbing the urea back. It's called back diffusion because it helps me concentrate my urine. So when you do the BUN to creatinine ratio, it should be high because a good kidney reabsorbs some of the urea but dumps all of the creatinine. So the ratio should be greater than 15. Next, a good kidney is a kidney that does not lose sodium in the urine. Sodium is valuable. It's important for your sodium potassium pump. Sodium problems equal CNS problems. We gotta preserve the sodium, man. So a good kidney is a kidney that does not waste the sodium in the urine. Third, a good kidney is a kidney capable of concentrating my urine and raising my urine osmolality. We will see the good kidney in pre-renal and in early post-renal azotemia. However, when the kidney is toast, we call this acute tubular necrosis, could be hypoxic because of a severe prolonged ischemia, or toxic because of heavy metals, drugs, etc. Any disease that ends in nephritis will belong here. What is the lab definition of a bad kidney? A bad kidney is a kidney that cannot reabsorb urea, so the ratio drops. A bad kidney wastes lots of sodium in the urine, so the fractional excretion of sodium is high. A bad kidney is a kidney that cannot concentrate the urine, so the urine osmolality is low. Now, it's some math time. Remember from my video on the EGFR or estimated GFR that we said that the amount of inulin or creatinine in the plasma is the same as the amount of creatinine in the urine because the kidney excreted the creatinine from the plasma to the urine, same amount. And since the amount equals volume times concentration, therefore volume times concentration here in the plasma equals volume times concentration here in the urine. What's the unknown here? The unknown is the volume of the plasma that is filtered, i.e. the clearance of creatinine, i.e. the GFR. Everything else is known to me. I can measure the concentration of creatinine in the plasma. I can measure the concentration of creatinine in the urine. I can measure the urine volume per minute. So that's the unknown. You put it here, put everything else here. So the clearance is voop. VOOP, volume of the urine per minute, times concentration of creatinine in the urine over concentration of creatinine in the plasma. This is the GFR. This is the same thing as clearance of creatinine or inulin. So far, so good. So far, so good. So here is clearance of anything. It doesn't have to be creatinine. It's always VOOP. What's the U? Urine concentration of that substance. And what's the P? The plasma concentration of that substance. Could be creatinine or anything else. 
amazing. And what's the GFR? It's also here. It is VOOP as well. How do you estimate the GFR? You can use inulin, but easier is to use creatinine. Easy peasy lemon squeeze. What is the fractional excretion of sodium or urea or any substance? The fractional excretion is how much is the kidney getting rid of relative to what I gave to the kidney. It's the output in the urine over the input that got filtered. Expressed as a percentage, fraction of excretion, excretion of that substance, sodium. After this, it is simple substitution. Look at the clearance here. It's in the numerator. So let's put it in the numerator like this. Here's the clearance of sodium, which is VOOP for sodium. Urine concentration of sodium, plasma concentration of sodium. And what's the GFR? It's also VOOP for creatinine. The urine volume or urine flow rate is the same. So the V will be canceled out with the V. And then you rearrange the equation. This plasma creatinine should go up and this plasma sodium should go down. And the equation should look like this for the fractional excretion of sodium. Now, this topic is going to be a piece of cake. Fractional excretion of sodium. Let's go to the clinical part first. Pre-renal, the kidney is still good, which means it's not wasting, it's not excreting sodium into the urine. So the FENA or the fractional excretion of sodium is low because the excretion of sodium is low. I am not excreting sodium. And if the problem is post-renal, early on, it's a good kidney. However, later it becomes a bad kidney because the obstruction is too bad and it backs up upwards until it damages both kidneys, such as severe bilateral hydronephrosis. But how about intrarenal azotemia? That's a bad kidney. That's acute tubular necrosis. Of course, the kidney will lose tons of sodium in the urine, raising my fractional excretion of sodium higher than two. So what's the fractional excretion of sodium then? It's a fraction. It's a percentage of the filtered sodium that will show up in the urine. Here, very little sodium shows up in the urine. Here, lots of sodium shows up in the urine. You get the idea? Yeah, and the math is simple. What are you trying to achieve? Sodium in the urine, sodium in the urine. So you put sodium in the urine upstairs. And then what's the opposite of sodium in the urine? Sodium in the blood, you put it downstairs. And then you crisscross with something constant, such as creatinine. Creatinine is a waste, born a waste, always a waste product. It's not going to change. So you put it the opposite way. If I put urine sodium upstairs, put serum creatinine with it. If I put serum sodium in the denominator, put urine creatinine with it, multiply, and to get a lovely number, you multiply by 100 to get that percentage. Conclusion, fractional excretion of sodium is a valuable tool to tell me where is the problem. Why is this patient oligoric? Why is this patient suffering from azotemia? Could be a problem before the kidney, such as heart failure or hemorrhage. Could be a problem in the kidney, hypoxic or toxic. Or could be a problem after the kidney, such as an obstruction or a stone. To tell the difference, the fractional excretion of sodium is very helpful. But what's the problem with that FENA test? If the patient is taking diuretic while having prerenal azotemia, a diuretic by definition is a drug that gets rid of water and sodium, because you need sodium to attract water into the urine. So both the sodium and the water will leave in the urine, but a diuretic usually excretes more sodium than water. What do you think is gonna happen to the fractional excretion of sodium in a patient taking a drug that gets rid of sodium? It will go up, even though it's not the kidney's fault. It could be the heart's fault. However, FENA is high. That's the drawback of FENA. My patient who is on diuretic while suffering from prenal azotemia. It gives me a false picture of intrarenal, even though the patient is prerenal. So what should we do now? That will be the story of the next video, which will talk about the fractional excretion of urea. That's why I always beg you to watch my videos in order. They build upon one another. Knowledge is incremental, unlike your crazy professor who vomits everything in your face in one session. You end up being a frustrated mediocrity with a stethoscope, and who's left to suffer with the uremic frosting? The poor patient.
If you want to master the topic of kidney physiology, please download my renal physiology course on my website, medicosisperfectionetics.com. It will teach you about GFR, the proximal tubule, the loop of Henle, the distal tubule, the titratable acidity, the micturition reflex, the countercurrent multiplier, countercurrent exchanger, etc. To learn about preeclampsia and eclampsia, as well as HELP syndrome, download my OBGYN high yields at medicosisperfectionetics.com. To learn the difference between metabolic acidosis with high anion gap versus metabolic acidosis with low anion gap, to learn what the flip the anion gap is and how the serum anion gap is not the same as the urine anion gap, which is not the same as the urine osmolar gap, which is not the same as the serum osmolar gap, download my my acid base imbalance course on my website. If you prefer to watch all of my premium videos here on YouTube instead of downloading them, then please join the tribe. Click on that join button next to subscribe, choose the tier that has all of my premium videos and indulge yourself. Medicine is fun, please subscribe, hit the bell, you can support me here or here and go to my website to download my cases my courses, my notes, and some mind maps. Thank you for watching. Be safe, stay happy, study hard. This is Medicosis Perfectionatus, where medicine makes perfect sense.